Cavalcade of America, starring Robert Young. Good evening, this is Robert Young. On the night of April 14th, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. Every school child knows this story, one of the most tragic moments in American history. Tonight, we tell of the strange, seemingly almost foreordained events which led to the death of Abraham Lincoln. But first, here is Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Good evening. To give beauty that will last a long time to the shutters and other trim on your home, DuPont recommends the use of Dulux trim and trellis finishes. These products of chemical know-how are an improved type of finishes which have outstanding advantages over ordinary trim paints. To be specific, Dulux holds its color and gloss far longer. It dries quickly. This means less damage from dust and insects. Dulux finishes are extremely resistant to fading and to the darkening and discoloration caused by mildew and other fungus growths. You can get Dulux trim and trellis finishes in these practical colors, light, dark, and jade green, Quaker brown, and black. These modern trim colors are among DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Mr. Lincoln Goes to the Play, starring Robert Young as Abraham Lincoln on the DuPont Cavalcade of America. There is an enormous word of two letters in the English language, if, just I-F. We use it daily, it enters our speech and our thoughts mechanically, automatically. And on that April 14th in 1865, if, well, however, let our story tell itself. And let us go back to the morning of Thursday, April 13th, the day before the assassination. A man enters the stage door of Grover's Theater in Washington, D.C. He walks slowly along the deserted corridor leading to an office. He stops. Yes, yes. Who is it? It's Booth, Mr. Hess. Oh, well, come in. You're busy, Mr. Hess? Yes, quite busy, John. What is it? Oh, nothing much. Just thought I'd drop by to say hello. Oh, well, we're opening a new play tomorrow night, and I'm going over the manuscript. Tomorrow? Well, tomorrow's Good Friday, Mr. Hess. Of course, of course. Well, do you think you'll draw a crowd? People are in a mood for celebration. Of course we'll draw a crowd. Why not? Well, I just thought because it was Good Friday... That... Look, the war's over. We're going to have a big celebration. The president's going to be the here. The president? Abraham Lincoln is going to be here? Yes, of course. I sent him an invitation this morning. Well, I didn't know that. We'll draw a crowd that way. The people will want to see him. Yes, I'd like... I'd like to see him myself. I'm glad I happened to drop by. Well, if there's nothing else, Booth, it's 11 o'clock. There's not much time left. Yes, you're right, Mr. Hess. In fact, there's very little time left. Eleven o'clock in Grover's Theater. Eleven o'clock all over the city of Washington. And in the White House. Abe, what are you going to do? Refuse to go out at all? No, no, of course not, Mary, but not the theater. But we've received an invitation. You can't keep refusing these invitations. I, uh, I have too much work to do. You need a rest. You need to relax. Hmm. Uh, not yet, Mary, not yet. Perhaps you don't like the play at Grover's. I don't even know what it is. Aladdin, another wonderful lamp. <laughs> Aladdin was lucky to have that lamp. Things were much easier for people in the Arabian Nights. Just rub a lamp, a genie appears, and your troubles disappear. Yeah, sometimes I wish Will I had one of those lamps. Will you please answer me, Abe, yes or no? Well, I'm afraid I'll have to refuse, Mary. <sighs> All right. Maybe Tad would like to go to Grover's. Yes, 
Give him the tickets, then. As a matter of fact, I'd much rather see Laura Keene. Oh, where is she playing? At Ford's Theater in Our American Cousin. Mm-hmm. It's comedy, isn't it? Yes, it's a comedy. You know, that might be better for you than Aladdin. You need to relax and laugh. Laugh? I've almost forgotten how in these four terrible years. Why don't we get up a party and go to Ford? Mary, Mary. You're bound and determined to get me to the theater. We could have a party. We could invite... General and Mrs. Grant? I... Why did you say that? Oh, Mary, please try to get along with Mrs. Grant. I'm sorry. I just don't like her and she doesn't like me. Well, invite them anyway. We've all got to get along, Mary. If there's bickering and petty quarrels among ourselves, how can we hope to reconstruct the country? Well, if you'll promise to go to Ford's, I'll ask General and Mrs. Grant. Well, I won't promise, Mary, but I'll tell you this. I'll think it over. And if I decide to go anywhere, it will be to Ford's. A change of plans. If President Lincoln decides to go anywhere... It'll be to Ford's, not Grover's Theater. But Booth doesn't know that as he enters John Deary's billiard parlor. Where's John Deary? Is he around? Uh, I think so, Mr. Booth. Oh, yes, there he is. Oh, thanks. Hello there, Booth. Oh, John, how are you? Fine. Want a game of billiards? Uh, no, no, not now, thanks. Anything wrong, Booth? Oh, no, nothing wrong. Matter of fact, I've come to ask a favor of you. Oh, what? Will you, will you get me a box for tomorrow night's performance? Huh? Why don't you get it yourself? They know you're there. You're an actor. Well, John, it's a little awkward, you see. I want a box close to President Lincoln. The and... president's going to be there? Yes, he's been invited. You can't very well refuse. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't explain why you can't get the box yourself, Booth. I, I don't want the embarrassment of having to accept complimentary tickets. Besides, you'd have a better chance of getting a box next to Mr. Lincoln. Why are you so anxious to sit near him? But just between the two of us, I have a friend I'm taking, and... Well, John, I'd like to impress her. Oh, that's it, eh? <laughs> Will you do it for me? Certainly. It's as good as done. You'll be sitting next to President Lincoln tomorrow night at Grover's. So Booth would sit next to President Lincoln at Grover's. But now, as if destiny were struggling to prevent tragedy, another scene takes place in the White House. Goodbye, Mr. Lincoln. Goodbye. Oh, uh, Grant, uh, General. Oh, yes, Mr. President? I, uh, I want a few words with you. Why, anything wrong, sir? Nothing that a few words can't fix. <laughs> Between the two of us, it's, um, about our wives... Oh, come on in here. Now, General, you and I have to win another war. And uh, believe me, this one will be almost as difficult. Oh, I don't understand, Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> Frankly, General, neither do I. But you must have noticed the coolness between Mrs. Lincoln and Mrs. Grant. Oh, well, there's no need to worry about it, sir. But I do, I do. I, I hate to see friction between people. It disturbs me. Oh, I realize it seems like such a tiny thing after what the whole nation's been through, but, well, let's do something about it. Well, what can we do? Uh, I want you and Mrs. Grant to attend a theater party with Mary and me tomorrow night at Ford's. Well, sir, I, I was thinking about getting home to see my children. You know, I haven't seen them in quite a time. Please, General, one more day won't make a great deal of difference. Well. I'll see if I finish my work in time. Good. I'll tell Mary I've invited you and Mrs. Grant. I'll have a messenger notify Ford's Theater that we're coming. I absolutely forbid it, Mr. Lincoln. I'll not hear of it. Now, now, Stanton, be calm. Calm? Do you realize you'll be exposing yourself to every crank with a grudge? You'll make yourself the easy target of any assassin in the city. Do you honestly think I'm in danger of assassination? All of us are. You, Seward, myself, General Grant. General Grant's going, too. Grant? Both of you? Yes. It's insane. 
You and Grant are asking for trouble. You've got to be careful, sir. At least until this hysteria dies down and the people get back to a more nearly normal state. I promise you there'll be a bodyguard. Bodyguard poppycock, Mr. President. Sitting in a box like... Like... Like a duck on a pond, is that it? Exactly. <laughs> you, uh, believe in dreams, Mr. Stanton? Dreams? Why? I, uh, I had one. I dreamed of a corpse. Yes, it was lying in the East Room, surrounded by soldiers, guards. I dreamed that the sound of weeping awakened me during the night. I went into the East Room and uh, asked the people why they sobbed. They answered, because the president was dead. You see, sir, all the more reason to be cautious right now. Oh, come, Mr. Stanton, don't take it so seriously. It was just a dream, just a dream. Well, it's getting late. Good night, Mr. Stanton. You have no more fears, and I'll have no more dreams. is it? Three in the morning. Oh. Why haven't you been to bed? I was, but I couldn't sleep. Are you ill? Oh, no, no, restless. Mary, do you know what today is? Today? Of course, Friday morning, April the 14th. What a question. It's Good Friday, Mary. Oh, well... Well, do you think it's right we should go to the theater? Abe, I thought you'd promise. Well, I forgot for a moment it was Good Friday. Now, look, Abe, people won't criticize you for going to the theater tonight. They'll understand. They'll know you need to relax. Mary, I don't want to go. Believe me, I don't. But why not? I don't know, my dear. I, I don't know. You need sleep. Now, please, go to bed. I can't, Mary. I, I can't sleep. Try. Mary, I can't go to the theater tonight. But it's all planned. Well, then, call it off. That's impossible. No one knows we plan to go. No one will be disappointed. But why have you decided so suddenly that you won't go? I just... I told you. Abe, that's not why. Yes, it is. No. I know you. There's something on your mind. Mary, there's so much work to be done. So many bitter hatreds to dissolve. So many wounds to heal. I've got to do those things. Nothing must stop me. Of course not. What can? Oh, Mary, I just don't want to go to Ford's tonight. Uh, Please don't ask me why not, but I must not go. He said, I must not go. Does he think that death waits for him at Ford's? He can't sleep, although it's three in the morning. And across the city, there's another man who can't sleep. And time presses its inexorable way into the morning of April 14th. That clock's slow. It's after three. Uh, 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 what time do you have, Booth? Ten after three. We won't have much longer to wait, Payne. Are you sure you'll be at Grover's? Yes, he'll be there, all right. And you're going to... To do it? I wouldn't let any other hand touch this gun. It's for him, for the tyrant. I tell you, Payne, this is the greatest thing any man has ever done for his country. Caesar had his Brutus. Lincoln will have his booth. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Full and rich and round. It's a magnificent line for a play. Lincoln will have his booth. <laughs> You're drinking too much. Don't tell me what I'm doing. You bungle the job. Bungle? I? Are you poor fool? It's all planned to the second like a well-written play, line for line, scene for scene, act for act, each player waiting for his cue. You are listening to Mr. Lincoln Goes to the Play, starring Robert Young as Abraham Lincoln on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry.
It is April 14th, 1865 in Washington, D.C. President Lincoln has promised Mary, his wife, that he'll go to Ford's Theater that night. But he feels that he should not go. Meanwhile, John Wilkes Booth makes his plans to assassinate the president at Grover's, believing the president will attend that theater. So that morning, at the stage door of Ford's Theater... Good morning, Willie. How are you? Oh, morning, Mr. Booth. I'm fine. You, sir? First rate, Willie, first rate. Well, any mail for me? I think there's one letter for you, Mr. Booth. Good, good. Let me have it, will you? Yes, sir. Everybody getting ready for the big doings tonight? Mm. Yes, sir. A mighty big celebration. Mm. Thanks, Willie. They reckon you'll be here tonight, Mr. Booth? No, I hardly think so, Willie. Hey, you don't want to see Mr. Lincoln? Mr. Lincoln? What? What are you talking about? Well, I done heard Mr. Lincoln's going to be here tonight. That's not true, Willie. I, I heard he'll be at Grover's. Oh, no, sir, Mr. Booth. A messenger come from the White House and said... You're lying! Mr. Booth, let go of me. Mr. Booth! You are lying! You, you done gone crazy, Mr. Booth. Why should I lie? Mr. Booth! You hurting me. Are you sure of what you said? But Mr. Ford done told me. Ooh. Willie, uh, I... Forget this, will you? Forget it? Yes, I... I got excited because I bought tickets for Grover's. It's a disappointment for me to learn that Mr. Lincoln will be here at Ford's. Oh, sure, sure. But that don't need worry you none, Mr. Booth. You can walk in or out of this year's theater anytime. Yes. That's right, isn't it? Anytime. Anytime at all. <laughs> Another change in plans. Booth's plans this time. And at almost the same moment, back in the White House. All right, gentlemen, that will be all for the moment. Thank you for coming to this meeting, gentlemen. Oh, uh, General, Grant, uh, just a moment. Yes, sir? Uh, about that theater engagement tonight. What do you say? Well, Mr. Lincoln... My wife and I both feel we should get home to see the children. My wife's very anxious to... Does that mean you're not going? Well, it's, it's a little awkward, sir. To tell the truth, we've talked it over. What is it, Grant? Is it because of the ill feeling? Not really that, Mr. Lincoln, but... Uh, I, I would like to spend a few hours at home before going on with my work here in Washington. Then you won't go? I'm afraid not, Mr. President. Of course, if you insist. Insist? Oh, no, no. Of course not, General. All right, you go home and see your children and give them my love. Thank you. You know, I could swear you seem glad I'm not going. <laughs> Maybe you're right. What? Oh, no, General, not what you think. As a matter of fact, because you're not going, I won't have to go. What do you mean, Abe? You won't have to go. Well, Grant isn't going. It would seem a little odd for me to go to the theater on Good Friday. I don't see that reasoning. Well, it's just that people might think Grant refused to go because of the day. How, how would it look if I went? Now, what kind of a reason is that? You're using every excuse in the world to get out of going. Well, Mary, I, I would much rather spend the evening at home. All right. <laughs> but you're not going to work. Well, just a few little matters before the meeting tomorrow. It's either the theater or relax here at home. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, you've got me. All right, then. No work. You promise? I promise. <laughs> you know, that clock is slow. I'm going to set it. Oh, Mary, my watch is on the table there. What time does it have? Um, it's just exactly three o'clock. Thank you, dear. There we are, three o'clock. All is well. Three o'clock and all is well. Yes, three o'clock in the White House. And three o'clock on a Washington street where two men walk. Tell you, Booth, he won't be there. 
Look. It's three already. The papers haven't said a word about it. He's got to be there. It's our only chance, Payne. We'd, we'd better give it up. That's enough of that talk. But listen to reason, Booth. First it was going to be at Grover's. Then at Ford's. The chances are he won't show up there either. I don't like the whole thing. <laughs> Afraid, Payne? Afraid of your own little skin? Too many things have had to be changed. Something might go wrong at the last minute. Look, John, let's give it up. Or at least wait. You idiot. It's our only chance. We may never get another like it. In a day or so, Washington will be full of Union troops. The White House, every theater, every house will be full of them. What chance will we have? None. I say it's got to be tonight. And if he doesn't go to Ford... He's got to be there. He's got to be at Ford's tonight. Ford's tonight. At Ford's tonight. Lincoln didn't want to go. But then it was though fate tired of the game she was playing. It's in the White House again that destiny plays the last card. Look, the late papers. They say both Grant and I will be at Ford's. The theater's sold out. Well, Stanton, that settles it. I've got to go. Never mind what the papers say. Don't risk your life. Mary's right. If the newspapers hadn't promised, I could refuse. But I, uh, I can't disappoint those people who will be there. You have a country to serve, sir. Of which these people are a part. No, Stanton. If Grant had agreed to go, I could stay home. But I can't disappoint those people. <laughs> Ready yet. Yes, my dear, I'm ready. I was just sitting here rocking. <laughs> I like this chair. Hate to get up out of it. Mary, did you ever hear the story about old Ben and the rocker? Seems he you was... You know sick. I've heard it. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, you have. Uh, I'd sure like to rest tonight. We're late, Abe. It's ten after eight and the play starts. Yes, yes, I know. Well, then... Get up and come on. Mary, I... All right. And wear your shawl, Abe. It's raw outside. Yes, all right, my dear. All right. Well, why are you standing there? What are you thinking about now? Oh, I was just looking at that chair and the fire in the grate. You know, Mary, sometimes I wish I could go back a long, long time. I wonder if a person would make the same mistakes twice. It's so late. Please, the carriage is waiting. All right, Mary, come on. Wait a minute, Mary. What is it now? That's strange. What's the matter? When I face this room, I can look back through the years. They're all crowded in here, Mary, all of them. The bitter, the sweet, the days in Illinois, Springfield. I see them all, yet when I turn to face this door, I see nothing. Abe, you're frightening me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary. <laughs> huh? The old clock's a little slow again. Set it when you get back, Abe. Of course. All right, Mary, let's go. I'm ready now. Quite ready for the play. Thank you, Robert Young. Now, here's Bill Hamilton of the DuPont Company. Peoples of the Far East cultivated silk in about the same way for thousands of years. Each new generation of silk farmers followed without question the old practices. And why not? Where in all the world could be found richer cloth than silk, woven from the patient spinning of the silkworm? In time, the silkworm, for all his reputation 
lost ground to the shimmering fibers spun in laboratories of the Western world. And so today, our newspapers tell us, Japanese scientists are taking a critical look at the silkmaker's art. Stronger silks are being developed. According to press accounts, nylon is the cause of all this activity to improve a fiber thought perfect long before the dawn of Christianity. To the DuPont Company, discoverer of nylon, this might be flattering. But DuPont does not believe that even nylon is so good it cannot be improved or made more cheaply or that no one can ever find a better synthetic fiber. Nylon had rivals from the day in 1938 when its discovery was announced. There were the natural fibers of silk and the man-made fibers of rayon. Rayon was good and getting better, and it was less expensive than silk. Since then, other synthetic fibers have been introduced, and more are coming from industrial laboratories. Nylon will have new rivals. That's why DuPont has spent more in research to improve it than was spent in the first discovery. Today, there are not only nylon yarns for sheer stockings and fine gowns, but spun nylon for sweaters and men's socks, and yarns blended of nylon and wool, and nylon yarns for the tools of industry, for rope, conveyor belts, filter cloths, and other hard-working fabrics. Under the competitive American system, no product is ever good enough, for the American people constantly seek out better quality. They, not the manufacturer, decide which products are best. That's why nylon is reaching new standards of usefulness. That's why nylon continues to be one of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, Cavalcade presents the distinguished star of stage and screen, Paul Muni. Our play, The Alerting of Mr. Pomerantz, is the story of the discovery of a mysterious disease that broke out in an American community last year, and how one Mr. Pomerantz, aiding the United States Public Health Service, helped track down the culprit in the best detective story fashion. Be sure to join us. Tonight's original DuPont cavalcade, Mr. Lincoln Goes to the Play, was written by Russell Hughes. Robert Young can currently be seen in Columbia Pictures' Technicolor outdoor drama, Relentless, a Cavalier production. Featured in tonight's play with Robert Young were Alice Reinhardt as Mary and Joe DeSantis as Booth. Music was composed by Arden Cornwell and conducted by Donald Bryan. Our Navy needs enlistment. In this peacetime Navy, men are given good pay and offered vocational training, college benefits, one month's vacation each year with pay, adventure, travel, and an opportunity to serve our country. If you're between 17 and 31, why not call on your local Navy recruiting office and find out about the advantages of a naval career? This is Ted Pearson inviting you to listen next week to The Alerting of Mr. Pomerant, starring Paul Muni. Cavalcade of America is presented each week from the stage of the Long Acre Theater on Broadway in New York and is brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.